Now once your onion plants start bulbing, and as you can see it's pretty easy to tell when that starts happening, two things you want to kind of keep in mind here. One, What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. It is Monday, March 6th here in South Georgia. Just a beautiful early spring day. Couldn't have asked for any better weather the last few days around here. So in today's video, we need to continue along with our spring seed starting schedule. Gonna tell you how or why we've had to alter that schedule a little bit. And that has a lot to do with these onions here behind me. We'll check on those as well. And then towards the end of the video, I'm telling you about some new fig varieties that we've just added to the site. So back in early February when we kind of kicked off our spring seed starting I kind of gave you all a tentative schedule that we we're going to try to follow as far as when we were going to start certain crops in the greenhouse those that we want to transplant and I think on that schedule I said oh, right around now early March was when I was going to get my watermelon transplant started in the greenhouse well I think I'm going to have to delay that a little bit and delay my watermelon planting a little bit because of these onions here behind me. I don't think they're going to be out of here by the time watermelons would be ready if I started watermelons right now. So, I'm going to have to shift our schedule around a little bit, but while we're out here, let's check on these onions. Now it's hard to tell right now if we're going to be able to make some monster onions like we did last year considering the fact that these things got completely burnt back from the arctic blast but they are looking really good right now this is what we want to see we want to see tons of vegetation on these plants lots of leaves and big leaves now it's hard to tell exactly how tall these onion leaves are because when they get so tall they just kind of fall over a little bit but i would guess that there's quite a few out here that are at least three foot tall and if we look closely at one of these dp sweet onions here we can see we got a nice thick stem on there which is what we want to see that usually means we're going to get a pretty decent sized onion we can also see this soil starting to crack around the base of the plant which tells me that these puppies have started bulbing and if we dig a little deeper we can see that indeed that has started happening so getting some enlargement there around the base of that plant got us a little onion forming there now not all of these varieties out here even though they're all short day varieties have started to bulb yet looks like most of the dp sweets there like i just showed you have started to bulb these Timon onions here haven't started yet and these red onions here maybe just a few of those have started bulbing these two rows over here that got bit the worst by the arctic blast we planted these rows several weeks later than we did those three there so these are still a ways off from any bulbing well they're still growing good now once your onion plants start bulbing and as you can see it's pretty easy to tell when that starts happening two things you want to kind of keep in mind here one you want to give them plenty of water right now give them a lot of water that's going to make you a nice big onion bulb and the other thing is you don't want to give them any more fertilizer at this point the plant is done making leaves when it starts bulbing it's devoting all its energy now into that onion that we're going to harvest hopefully in another month or so now one more thing that some people will do when their onions start bulbing is to do like we did earlier and kind of push away the soil around that plant where that bulb is starting to form. Some people call it spooning the onions. Now I've never really been a big proponent of spooning onions. I might do another kind of spooning, but that's not really appropriate to talk about right here. As you can see, we got way too many onions to be out there pushing dirt away from the base of each of those plants and we always make nice big onions without doing any spooning so i would say if you're bored you got plenty of time or you just think it's absolutely necessary go for it it's not going to hurt anything to pull some dirt away from around the base of that bulb there but i don't think it's necessary at all we don't ever do it and we still have successful onion grow outs now those dp sweet onions may be ready to harvest in three or four weeks but some of those other varieties probably going to be at least another six weeks or more on those which means we don't need to start our watermelons today probably going to push that back one to two weeks but i do have some stuff i want to get started in the greenhouse today first let's check on our tomatoes and peppers that we started several weeks ago 
So I've taken most all these trays off the heat mat except for this tray of peppers here because I'm still waiting on all those chocolate habanero peppers to pop. A lot of them are coming through now, so we'll probably take this one off the heat mat in the next few days. The peppers that germinated earlier, the ones that are not so hot, look really, really good. Couldn't be happier with how healthy those are looking. And then over here, we've got two beautiful flats of tomatoes. Now there's one thing that's really, really interesting to note about these two trays of tomatoes here. So this tray right here has mostly hybrid determinate tomatoes in it, mostly the Roadster and Red Snapper variety, and these were started around the middle of February. This tray here is all indeterminate heirloom tomatoes. These were started in early February, right at the beginning of February compare these two the ones we started two weeks later are considerably bigger than these over here now those two trays of tomatoes have received the same amount of water been given the same fertilization program with the agrothrive general purpose so we haven't treated out of the trays differently but goes to show you the differences between hybrid determinate tomatoes and indeterminate open pollinator heirloom tomatoes those determinants just get up and going a lot faster and those hybrid seeds just have a little more vigor in them they just pop a little bit better and they just look a little bit better right now now that doesn't mean we won't get good performance out of those heirloom tomatoes but i thought it was just interesting to note the differences at this stage in the growth cycle now since we're not starting watermelons in here today and i probably still need to wait another couple weeks before i start okra or pumpkins i figured it'd be a good day to get some of these flower seeds started so we're adjusting our schedule just a little bit and got several different varieties that we're going to be planting here so the first one we're going to be planting is a flower called ageratum now not a whole lot of folks may know about ageratum but it is one of my favorite flowers to grow it doesn't get real big makes these little kind of puffy looking blue blooms on it and the native bees around here those little tiny bees absolutely love this stuff and this flower loves the heat whereas some other flowers will start looking pretty pitiful once the middle of summer arrives these things will grow all throughout the summer so if you've never tried Azure Autumn, especially if you live in an area where it gets pretty hot you should give it a try and in addition to the Ageratum, we've got several different colors or varieties of zinnias here to plant. We've got some white zinnias. This variety is called Oklahoma White. We've got Queen Lime with Blush. We've got Queenie Lime Orange. And we've got Queenie Red Lime. So a lot of Queenie zinnias that we got planted here. I just like the color of those when I was looking on Johnny's website. So that's why we went with those. Then we've also got some marigolds here. I really enjoyed growing the giant marigolds over the last couple of years. So we've got this one here called giant yellow. Now with these giant marigolds, they do get a little tall and a little heavy. You have to support them or heavily prune them. But I really like the giants over the regular marigolds. And another marigold variety I had never seen or tried before called white swan here. That one looked pretty. So I figured we'd give that one a try. And then lastly, we're going to be planting some of these giant sunflower seeds that we have listed on our website at LazyDogFarm.com. These make absolutely massive heads. They really bring in the pollinators. And if you like harvesting sunflower seeds, you can get a ton of seeds off one of these heads that can get about two foot in diameter. So we've got one of these PropTech trays here filled with ProMix BX. Got it pre-moistened. Just need to make some dibbles here. We can set our seeds in the center of all these cells. Then we'll go ahead and get our labels in place. We may end up moving these around just depending on how much of each we plant. We'll try to plant, you know, relatively the same amount of each here, especially with the zinnias. So we can get a nice little mix of colors. Now most of all these seeds we'll be planting here are pretty easy to handle, pretty good size, with the exception of these ageratum seeds which are so so tiny that's why they put them in a little envelope like this almost impossible to singulate these things you just kind of do the best you can they are so little you don't want to do this when the wind is blowing or you'll lose all your seeds one of the smallest seeds i have ever seen so no way we can just get one per cell of those we're just going to try to get at least one seed per cell will do the best we can here. 
And we still have a good many left over there, so I'm going to try to finesse these back into this packet here. All right, now that we got those difficult ones done, the rest of these should go pretty fast. Dania seeds are pretty big, marigold seeds are pretty big, and these sunflower seeds are pretty big. All right, so we got that flower tray started, and it'd be nice to have a whole tray of flowers we can kind of pick and choose different spots in all our garden plots to put those. We'll probably put a whole row of zinnias somewhere, not really sure where at this point, and then we'll probably stick a bunch of these in our raised beds. You know that little space in our raised beds before where our irrigation starts, that little five or six inches there that drives some of y'all absolutely crazy because I don't use it, we'll probably stick some flowers right there, use that space a little more wisely. So now let's talk about some of these fig trees that we recently added to our website and we'll start with this one right here which is not actually on the site but the one we get asked about the most often. So this right here is a little baby black malta fig tree or malta black whatever you want to call it. Now we won't ship it like this we'll step it up to a four by nine pot. We've had a lot of people asking about this variety. I don't have many of them this year. At most, I'm going to have around 30 or so. I didn't take a lot of cuttings because I was going to let the trees I have grow out even more next year. We should have considerably more of them. But I suspect to have around 30 or so of them. I'll make an announcement either on our YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram page when they are available. Probably going to be another month or so because we still have to step these up into a bigger pot let them establish a little bit before we ship them so a lot of people want the black malta and rightfully so because the berry flavors in that fig are just absolutely amazing but if you can't get your hands on one of those because they're going to go fast probably won't last long at all this right here is a more than suitable replacement so this variety here is called violet de bordeaux this is a berry fig as well i'm not sure if i was blindfolded if i could tell the difference between this and a black malta the figs on this are a little smaller not by much so if you can't get a black malta this is a good one to try as well now another variety that a lot of people have been waiting on or asking about is this one here called olympian and that's because this is supposed to be one of the more cold hardy fig varieties out there now i don't have a way to really test the cold hardiness down here in south georgia but from what i've read it's really really cold hardy now as is the case with the black malta we're pretty limited on the olympian fig trees we're almost out of those if you want one of those i want to get it while you can if you don't get one of these and you still want a relatively cold hardy fig this would be a suitable substitute white marcells we've got some beautiful trees of these and like olympian this is supposed to be one of the more cold hardy varieties out there so if you've been patiently waiting on a black malta fig tree just hang in there i'll have some ready in the next few weeks they'll be ready in time for you to get them in the ground and get some good growth out of them in this first year so I hope you enjoyed the video today. Nice to see some progress on those onions and to get some more seeds started here in the greenhouse. If you've got onions growing already, let me know in the comments below how they're doing. And also, if you've ever grown any of these queenie type zinnias, let me know what you thought about them. I've grown a lot of different zinnias, but never these queenie types. And the pictures just look beautiful. So I've got high hopes for them, but let me know if you've tried them. And as always, you can find links to all our affiliate partners in the description below. Companies like AgriThrive, which is what we use to grow all these beautiful seedlings and fig trees here in this greenhouse. Got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com, where you can find those giant sunflower seeds that we planted earlier. All those fig trees we just talked about garden blog recipes all kind of good stuff over there if you did enjoy the video be sure to subscribe hit that notification button like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm oh, well. mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life